today we're going to talk about Pro Mode, a different way to connect your piano disc system to your iPad. Pro Mode has several advantages over the standard way of connecting to the Silent Drive HD2. First, since it uses a direct MIDI connection to the Silent Drive, the piano has better accuracy and overall better playback. Also, Silent Drive HD2's Pro Mode gives you a special way of connecting to speakers. You can connect to speakers independently without going through the CPU board. That allows you to use wireless Wi-Fi or even Bluetooth speakers and place them anywhere in your room and connect wirelessly directly from your iPad to the speakers. The last advantage of Pro Mode is it allows you to play a MIDI file in sync with an audio file. So if you have an audio file that also has a MIDI performance that synchronizes with it, you can play those together and even get true stereo audio. Now, there's a few things you should know before you start using Pro Mode. First, when you're connecting to the Silent Drive HD2, you can choose one Bluetooth connection, either audio or MIDI. We don't recommend connecting both simultaneously. So, for the purposes of this demo, we're connected via MIDI, and our audio is connected via an external Bluetooth audio adapter. Now, the other thing you should know about Pro Mode is that there's a few features in the app that work a little bit differently. For one, we recommend that you put all of your piano disc music in the My Music library. And that's because when you're playing from My Music, the app is able to separate the audio from the MIDI and play your piano directly over a MIDI connection while sending the audio directly to the speakers. Now, if you have your piano disc music in your iPod library instead, that's going to need that standard direct Bluetooth audio connection to the CPU. So that's not going to work for Pro Mode. We recommend that you put all of your piano disc music in My Music and your personal music in your iPod library. That allows you to still enjoy your personal music on your iOS device without getting in the way of the piano disc library. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is PD Radio. PD Radio also requires a direct Bluetooth audio connection to the CPU and isn't compatible with Pro Mode. Another thing to keep in mind with Pro Mode is that you need to connect MIDI each time you use the app. Unfortunately, MIDI doesn't auto connect like a Bluetooth audio connection. So you need to go into settings and connect to Bluetooth MIDI each time you want to use the app. Now, let's connect to Silent Drive HD2 and see how to use Pro Mode. Remember, since Pro Mode uses two connections to this piano, we need to first connect audio and then MIDI. For this demo, we're using a standalone Bluetooth MIDI audio adapter connected directly to our speakers. So we'll go into Settings and click Connect. There we go. Our Bluetooth audio is connected. Now, We'll connect MIDI. We'll open the IQ app, go to settings, select connect Bluetooth MIDI, and then select PD Silent Drive BT MIDI. There, we're connected. Now, if for some reason the playback calibration interface doesn't allow you to adjust after this point, Simply tap the PD Silent Drive BT MIDI connection again, and it reestablishes connection with the CPU. Now that we're connected, we're going to make a few adjustments to the configuration. Now, if you've seen the other videos, you may have already learned how to calibrate the system using the PD Calibrate app. Well, a lot of these settings are very similar, so why calibrate a second time? That's because Pro Mode uses a virtual IQ that's built into the app itself. It's not using the hardware IQ that's built into the CPU. Now, the first option is external audio. External audio means that the speakers aren't connected to the CPU. That's what we're doing in our case. Our speakers are directly connected to a Bluetooth audio adapter. If instead you have your audio growing through the CPU, it's important to turn external audio off. Otherwise, it interferes with performance. First, we're going to adjust the playback volume range. Now, similar to the PD Calibrate app, all the settings that you see towards the left-hand side of your screen 
pertain to low volume playback, and all of the settings on the right hand side of the screen pertain to high volume playback. So you'll have two dots for each control. The left dot controls what happens when your piano is playing at the lowest possible volume and the right dot controls what happens when your piano is playing at the maximum possible volume. Let's get started with the playback volume range. Our minimum value is set to zero and our maximum value is set to 100. What that means is that when the iPad is turned all the way down, the piano is playing at its lowest possible volume. And when the iPad is turned all the way up, the piano is playing at full volume. That seems to be what we would want, but in reality, it's not ideal. Let me show you why. First, we'll start playing a song. Now, what was happening is the piano is drowning out the audio of the accompaniment. And that's because we're starting the volume at too low of a level. Actually, what happens is the iPod outputs an audio signal to the speakers, and it needs to be a substantial volume before the speakers are able to replicate the minimum volume of the piano. So let's bump up that minimum audio setting a little bit and see what effect we have. We'll try 25. That's about right. Now, when the iPad is playing at 25%, that means that the audio accompaniment is loud enough to accompany the piano, and the piano begins playing at its minimum possible value. Now, it's important to note here that the piano isn't playing at 25% of its volume. The piano at this point is actually playing as low as it can, and that's in balance with the accompaniment audio. Sometimes it may be necessary to even start your playback at 50%, um, depending on the audio output of your music player. So if you're connected via the headphone port on the iPad, for example, you typically need to start playback at about 50% before it has enough signal to actually match the output of the piano. But that's okay, your piano is still playing at its lowest possible volume. The maximum is set similarly. What that means is that when your piano is playing at its maximum, you also want the accompaniment to sound about right, to be in balance. Let's see how that sounds. There, very good. So now we have our minimum and maximum audio level set. Now, let's talk about the piano volume range. Typically, you want to start at zero, which means your piano is playing at its lowest possible volume. When you turn down your iPad, the piano will be playing as quietly as possible. Now, as you increase the volume on your iPad, your piano continues to increase in volume according to the level you set in the piano volume range. Now, let's take a listen and, and see how this works. We'll start at a low volume and gradually increase it until the piano starts playing and then continue until the piano is playing at its maximum possible volume level. What you heard was the piano reached a threshold at which its volume leveled off and the piano wasn't getting any louder, but the accompaniment still was. Now, every piano in setup is a little bit different, but in this case, our piano leveled off at about 80%. So let's indicate that by reducing the piano volume range to 80%. So now our minimum piano volume range is zero, and the maximum is 80. Let's see if the piano remains balanced with the accompaniment a little bit better this time. Great. 
So now, as we increase volume or decrease volume, the piano and the accompaniment are balanced. We've adjusted the piano's maximum volume level, but what about the minimum? I said it's usually best to start at zero, but are there any cases where you may want to increase that a little bit? Yes. Basically, if your piano hasn't been calibrated or regulated in a long time, and maybe missing notes or something when it's playing at low volume, you can use this as a quick fix to get the piano a little bit more volume so that it plays those notes accurately. Now, it's best to get your piano disc technician back to your house to adjust the calibration again. But if you need a quick fix, you can always bump up the minimum piano volume a little bit just to give the piano a little extra volume at its lowest possible volume setting. Let's discuss synchronization. Similar to the volume that we said earlier, the left dot is what happens when the piano is playing at its lowest possible volume, and the right dot defines the sync when the piano is playing at maximum volume. So in this case, let's turn down the volume until the piano is not playing at all, and then gradually increase it until the piano starts playing. And take a listen to sync. There. The piano just started playing, so now we're playing at our minimum volume level. And the sync sounds pretty good. So let's move on to our maximum volume and see how the sync sounds there. Okay, I'm going to make a minor adjustment to the maximum volume sync, and then we'll listen again and see how it sounds. That sounds great. So now that we've set the minimum sync and the maximum sync, the piano and the accompaniment will remain in sync regardless of what volume the iPad is set to. This way, you'll get the best possible performance. So now, regardless of the volume you're playing your piano, both the sync and the balance will remain in check. There's a special way you can play music in Pro Mode, and that's by synchronizing a MIDI file with an audio file. Let me show you how that works. First, you're going to need a MIDI file in the My Music library and the matching audio accompaniment file in the iPod library. So, in this example, my MIDI file is called Piano Man, and it's showing right now as a MIDI file. I'm going to touch that MIDI icon and bring up the detail for this song. Now, notice the media type is currently set to MIDI. I'm going to change that to Piano Sync and then go back. Now, you'll see there's an option for a sync file. When I select that, Piano Man is already selected. That means that this audio file is ready to go, and that Piano Man file is in my iPod library. So we'll go back, touch Done, and now you'll notice the icons changed. Instead of the MIDI icon, you'll see a Piano Sync icon. And now when we play the song, the piano will be played over MIDI, and the audio will be played over our audio connection. And so we have true stereo audio along with MIDI being played in sync together. Now let's talk about accompaniment delay. First, a little bit about what that actually is. When music comes from piano disc, it's professionally edited by our on-staff musicians, and the piano and accompaniment are aligned precisely. However, if you're downloading MIDI files from the internet or syncing your own music and have a piano performance you want to play along with an MP3 file, then those aren't going to be aligned by default. And you need to give the piano a little bit of a head start in playback so that the piano is aligned with the accompaniment. Let's hear how that sounds. I have a file that I've already set up that has a MIDI file playing in sync with an audio file. Now, our current Accompaniment delay is set to 250 milliseconds. Let's see how that sounds. Yeah. 
Now, in that example, the piano was late. So we need to make a little adjustment to our accompaniment delay. So let's bump that up. And try again. There, that's better. So now the piano is in sync with the accompaniment. Now, it's important to keep in mind that this setting only applies to music that you've downloaded from the internet or are processing yourself. If you've purchased music from Piano Disc, this setting doesn't affect it at all. It only affects piano sync files that are linked together as two separate files. Now that we've calibrated the IQ app, we're ready to start playing music. But just a reminder, the Piano Disc Calibrate app is for the hardware IQ and the calibration settings that you saw in the IQ app are for the virtual IQ that's in the app itself. So let's get started and play some music. The first type of song we're going to play is a standard piano disc song. This is an MP3 file that has the piano track encoded on the right audio channel and the accompaniment on the left audio channel. Now, normally, that audio signal is sent directly to the CPU for decoding. But in this case, the decoding is happening in the app itself. And so when we play the music, it's playing the piano via a MIDI signal, and it's playing the speakers via an audio signal. Let's see how that sounds. It sounds just like it does when you're playing with the hardware IQ in the CPU, but this time it's happening virtually. Now, remember the advantage in this is that you can place your speakers remotely. They don't have to be connected to the CPU because the decoding is happening inside the app itself. In Pro Mode, you can also play a standard MIDI file that you've downloaded from the internet. Now, in a standard MIDI file, it's kind of hit or miss, especially if you're downloading it from random websites. Sometimes they sound great and sometimes they don't. Um, but the key is, is that you have a piano part in the MIDI file and then you can also have accompaniment. So in this case with Pro Mode, what happens is the piano part is sent directly to the piano and the accompaniment is played through the audio system of your iPad. Remember, this type of file is affected by the accompaniment delay we set up earlier in the settings. Now, in Pro Mode, it's very easy to record your own performances and play them back. And that's because Pro Mode is already connected to your piano disc system via MIDI. So all you do is go into My Recordings, select New Recording, and you're ready to go. The system is already waiting for you and will start recording as soon as you start playing. Now that we've covered how to set up Pro Mode and how to play music using Pro Mode, one other option I want to mention is disabling Pro Mode. So in settings, you'll notice that there's an option to disable professional mode. Simply turn on the slider and professional mode is turned off. And what that means is that the IQ app will use a single audio connection to the CPU. No longer will it be connected via audio and MIDI. It will revert back to a single audio connection. So why would you want to do it? Well, for one thing, it's a little bit simpler. If you're using Bluetooth audio, it connects automatically and you don't need to remember to turn on MIDI each time. Another thing is that you may want to listen to PD radio um, or may have your music in the iPod library instead of My Music. That's okay. You can turn off Pro Mode and still have a MIDI connection to the piano. So if you decide to keep Pro Mode enabled, remember there's several benefits. You have a direct MIDI connection to your piano disc CPU. The other, you have flexible speaker placement options and can put speakers wirelessly anywhere in the room without a cable to your piano. And lastly, you have advanced and powerful playback methods such as synchronizing a MIDI file with a stereo MP3 file. So I hope you enjoy Pro Mode and that this video has been informative.